Have you ever heard of floating your golf balls to find the balance points on them? If the answer is no, which I'm guessing that it likely is for most of you, well, if you stick around for this video, I'm going to show you the process that you can use to find the balance points in your golf ball. And then after I've shown you that, I'm going to put them to the test to see if this can actually make any difference to our game or not. So before we actually get into it, let me just quickly show you what this is all about and what some of the benefits may be from finding this balance point. So basically every golf ball is made of the shell and they'll have a core inside of the shell. Now what you might find because golf balls are mass produced and it's not possible to test every single one when manufacturing is that the core inside can actually lead to one side more than the other within the shell. And what that can actually do to when you're hitting it, whether you're on the putting green or if it's flying through the air, is that if one side does lean more to the other, then it can actually pull the ball in that direction. However, if you can find the balance points, which is ultimately the heavier side of the ball, then you can align that up so you're keeping it on the vertical axis rather than having it on the horizontal one. So basically, if you have the heavier and lighter side rolling end over end of each other, then that's only going to change the loft and the launch of the golf ball. Rather than if you have it on the side, then that's going to change the direction of it. And so nowadays, most golf balls will come with some sort of alignment already printed on them, whether it's a full on stripe around the ball, even a half and half colored ball, or even just a standard model of golf ball on the side. So if you are somebody that uses this line, you're going to either want the ball to be perfectly balanced so that the core is exactly in the middle of the golf ball, or as close to that as you can get, or if you find that the heavy and light side of the ball is on that line, then you can still use that alignment and it will work perfectly fine. It's just when you find that the heavy and light side starts to go off from that alignment line and even in the same box of balls you can find that from one ball to the next that it can vary quite a lot so using this Callaway ERC ball as an example obviously they've built the alignment in there to use as a guide when you're putting but when I tested this ball this was actually one of the furthest ones out that I've tested and the weight is quite far over to the Callaway logo so if you are using this alignment to put with then the ball is actually going to be pulling over to that side as I said we will find out shortly how much of a difference that can actually make but let me show you now the process that we can actually use to find this balance point. But I think it's worth noting that I actually heard off this from Bryson's caddy who's done a video on it, but apparently he heard about this from Tiger's caddy as well. So there might actually be a bit more to this than you first think. So anyway, to start with, all you need is a bowl and a pretty big bag of Epsom salt, just normal bath salts, which only cost a couple of pounds for a bag. And this is just used to thicken out the water, which allows the ball to float in it. And once you have those two things, all you have to do then is obviously pour some water into your bowl and then probably just use about half and half ratio with half water and the other half being Epsom salt. You don't really want to be scared of adding too much salt, like the more the better, as long as the ball isn't touching the salt at the bottom of the water. It does take quite a bit to make the balls float and basically just keep adding the salt until you find that the balls do float. And then once you've mixed it up together, you can just go ahead and throw the balls in that you want to test. And for this, I'm going to use a box of the new Wilson Model X balls and just see how many good and how many bad ones there is in this box. You also probably want to get some sort of towel because this can get quite messy or just something like kitchen roll to dry them off with when you take them out. So if we just start with this lonely one first, when you throw it in, it will surface as a point just above the water but the key is if it resurfaces to the same spot or if it resurfaces to a different spot. If you mark the spot that it first comes to when it surfaces for the first time, using either a Sharpie or any sort of pen like that, then this just reminds you where the point is. So then if you come back to do it again, but this time with the point that you made facing down, if it resurfaces with the same point on top in the same place where it was last time, then you know that is the lightest point of the ball with the heavier side underneath, which is obviously sinking to the bottom more. But if the ball does surface at a different point that wasn't marked in the first place, then you know that you have a well-balanced golf ball. But it is probably worth just checking a couple of times to make sure that it is coming up in a different location. And if it is after three or four times, then you know that you've got a perfectly centered golf ball. And then that just means that that is a good ball to play with and you can mark that up how you choose to. If the ball does keep surfacing at the same position, then now you know where your lighter and heavier sides are. With that, you can then draw a line in any direction from there. And then that will just mean that the heavy and light side are rolling end over end of each other and therefore not pulling the ball offline. Now you could listen to Bryson's caddy again on this and even go a step further, which is by putting a 10 milligram lead weight on the lighter side of the ball. And if the ball then still surfaces in that same spot, then that means that the inner core is out by more than 10 milligrams, which will have a big enough effect on the ball where he will just throw them out. And if things even putting them on the vertical axis, it wouldn't even be worth playing with still. But I mean, even again, another thing that you could do 
do, which again Bryson does, is by getting two of the dimples together. And it's a similar sort of principle again, in which you want to keep the dimples in a vertical line. So if you do hit the ridge with your putter between dimples, which is obviously a very likely outcome, then again, this is going to knock the ball ever so fractionally on the vertical line. So it's going to change the loft that it comes off off the face, rather than if the two dimples were at an angle and you were to hit the ridge in between, then that could send the ball just marginally offline. Apparently, anyway, that is what I've heard from Bryson. I mean, don't take my word for it just yet. I'm just going based off what I've heard Bryson say. But anyway, out of a full box of these Wilson Staff Model X balls, I did only find that two of them weren't perfectly balanced. And that's actually the best box that I've tested and I've done quite a few so far. I usually find that there's actually more that are unbalanced than there is balanced. So that is quite a good sign for these Wilson balls, which I am looking forward to testing. And there is actually a different and maybe easier way of doing this by using a spinner. Having tried this with a cheaper version, I didn't find it to be all that accurate and it just didn't actually work very well. But I much preferred using the Epsom salt method as I think that is a more reliable method. But basically with the spinner, you just put the ball in, spin the ball around and poke a pen through the hole, which draws a line on the balance point, supposedly. As you can see with this one that I did and every other one that I've used this spinner with, the pen doesn't show up on the ball very well. And I think it is just because it is the cheaper version. If you were to go with the Dera one, which is about 60 or 70 pound, then this is obviously going to work a lot better. But I much preferred using the Epsom salt method as I think that is a more reliable method. And to potentially save you having to buy more and more salt every time you want to do this, it is probably possible that you could actually just keep the bowl of water and the salt in it and just reuse it every time that you want to test some balls out. But that's a couple of pound for the Epsom salt. It's not too bad to keep renewing your salt. So it's now time for the main event with just one last thing to do. So I'm going to put them to the test now on a launch monitor and on the putting green. So I used a tailor-made TP5X for this as all the other balls that have been floating obviously were marked up and I didn't want to leave a big Sharpie imprint on the net. So I grabbed this TP5X ball that was out quite a lot and I hit 20 shots with a 7-iron and with a driver both in the balance position and in the unbalanced position which was on the alignment line of the ball. The numbers that I was showing off these actually could suggest that this might actually make some difference. The numbers across the irons and the drivers comparison were very similar. They were showing that when the ball was placed in the balanced position with the heavier side on the vertical line, the spin actually decreased both in the side and the back spin, resulting in shots that weren't drawing as much and just remaining more under control. So we also did the same thing then with putting with 20 puts from 5 feet and 20 from 10 feet. Again, 20 with the balanced position and 20 with the unbalanced position. And the results were pretty much the same with the driver and the irons. But I did just hold one extra one for 10 feet with the ball in the balance position and that was the only difference that I saw between the two and of course that one shot can make a difference at the end of your round it could be the difference between you finishing first and second in a tournament so I know some of you will question whether or not this is worth doing especially if you are a bit of a higher handicap but really at the end of the day this isn't going to do you any harm like it's not going to make your scores any worse the worst thing really that you're going to find from this if you buy a box of balls and you find that the majority of the balls come away from the set alignment they have on on them because if you do go by this then you will have to mark it away from that line but i think more than anything this could just give you that bit of extra confidence that you've been looking for especially on the greens but yeah i would definitely recommend giving this a go at least i think i've covered just about everything that i know on the topic there as usual thanks for watching guys i'll see you all in the next one